Got this email today, Dad. Hi, Zach. Let me say I really appreciate the videos you and your father make. I need your advice. I'm considering buying a used car from Utah. I live in South Carolina. Could you please review the car facts I received? Um, would you purchase it? If so, what price would you pay? It's also important uh, to know that my credit union will not approve me for an auto loan because of my DTI, my mortgage payment, uh, which my husband, husband pays. My credit score is 813 and I earn $43,000 annually. I looked at the car facts, Dad. Yes. The 2020 Lexus RX 350. It's got an yes. accident on it. It's got 70,000 miles on the odometer. I looked it up on Car Edge. It has a $33,000 asking price. Wow. This is not intended to be shaming this community member. This is a moment of opportunity to talk about how much car can I afford? If you're making $43,000 a year, Dad, really, you've got to be kidding me that you're buying a $33,000 Lexus that has a prior accident and 70,000 miles on the odometer. That's a bad decision, correct? Um, it doesn't sound as wise a decision as someone could make. Um, it is 40, $43,000 a year is what? Uh, $3,500 a month approximately uh, net. So if you utilize my 10% rule of you should you should put no more than 10% of your net earnings towards your automobile, uh, that would mean that you should put no more than $350 a month towards your new vehicle or any vehicle. If you could buy this vehicle for $32,000 plus fees, uh, with fees, it's going to be somewhere around thirty-five, thirty-six thousand uh, dollars. How long would one have to finance that in order to get a payment of three hundred and fifty dollars a month or less? Um, so, no, it doesn't. It, a, it doesn't sound like it would fit into the ten percent rule. No. Um, the, the minor accident, depending on how minor it is, um, that might not scare me so much. Um, the fact that it has 70,000 miles on it, and I, and as good a vehicle as Lexuses are, and they are, um, they are for the, for the uh, Japanese imports, more expensive to maintain mm -hmm. than their competitors. So if you were to look into what it costs to maintain a 70,000 mile Lexus, that might be another reason to be thinking of something else. Uh, and not to be self-serving, but you could probably get some of that information at Car Edge um, in our research hub uh, where, where you could find out what expected maintenance costs are for that type of vehicle. Um, when you could expect a major expense, a major breakdown. I just know from having been in the business that Lexuses tend to be a tad bit more expensive to maintain than, say, a comparable Acura or a comparable Mazda. Just saying. There you go, folks. I went to it just on caredge.com slash research, typed in Lexus, then RX350, clicked on cost of ownership, then clicked on maintenance. Yeah, you can see it all right here, all this information. So anyway, yeah, you know, maybe not our best, really. You've got to be kidding me. But I think a, an important moment to, to recognize, you know, you can you can really bury yourself in a car loan and you shouldn't. You don't need to. Like maybe you can get approved for 84 months on a car note, but don't. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think it was a, a really you got to be kidding me as much as it was a a really, we need to make a, a better, uh, more well-informed decision as to what it is we want to buy and how much it is we're willing to spend. Car Edge Insights, your toolkit to get the best deal on your next car is 25% off between now and December 2nd. Go to caredge.com slash insights to learn more. All right, well, then we've got a legit, really, you've got to be kidding me that we can follow that up with, Dad. And this one comes by way of another father-son duo. I'll pull this up on the screen. Give me one second here. This is a hell of a story, folks. Wait for it. Carvana's CEO's father, Ernest Garcia II, sees $1.4 billion windfall from stock sale. Dad, it, I just want to, before you, you dive into this, 
I hope I can deliver something similar for you someday, man. 1.4 no. billion. I would, I would, even if it just said 1.4 thousand, 1. <laughs> 1. 4, 10, 000. I think, like, dude, we don't need billion. Drop the B, <laughs> drop the M. Does that have that? Holy cow. Well, I, A, I don't think you'll ever be able to produce that for me because I don't own any stock. <laughs> So, so I got, I, I got nothing to sell. Um, but, but the Garcias own about 80% of the stock and they got plenty to sell and they have been sell. at least uh, the father has been selling since April. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, really, you gotta be, you bring it back from, from death row, um, from the brink of bankruptcy. Um, you produce profits that no other company when it comes to selling used cars has been able to produce, um, staggering how high they are. Um, the investors are thrilled and, and they have bid that stock back up to the moon and you, why they're doing that are selling your stock so you can rake in the cash. Sounds like the perfect plan to me. Um, I only wish. I could have done it myself. More recalls, man. More engine yeah. recalls. Faulty GM diesel engine triggers recall of more than 461,000 vehicles in the United States. This comes on the heels of uh, Toyota. They've got a, an engine recall. They're replacing 102,000 engines in the United States for the Toyota Tundra and Lexus LX. We have an investigation over at Honda for 1.4 million vehicles with engine issues. Now we've got 461,839 diesel engines impacting 2020 to 2022 Chevy Silverado 1500, 2500, 3500, GMC Sierra 1500, 2500, 3500s, and 2021 Cadillac Escalade, Escalade ESV, Suburbans, Tahoes, Yukons, and Yukon XL models that have this diesel engine that have been recalled. Whoa. Um, uh if if the industry didn't have quality issues, it wouldn't have any issues. Uh, and and so we just keep seeing it, and and we keep seeing it from brands that we don't always necessarily expect it from. It is um, perhaps uh, because the bean counters have too much sway as to um, what they can do, how much they can spend on certain parts and things like that. So that we're running into issues and it's, it's, it's unfortunate, um, but it's probably something that's just going to continue. Um, I'm glad I don't have a Honda Acura at the moment. I'm glad I don't have one of those Toyotas that needs a, a brand new engine. And I'm certainly glad I'm I'm not driving a GM product with a diesel in it at the moment. It's wild, man. We've got all these quality issues going on. And yeah, it's a bummer. Bummer to see General Motors tied up in this as well. Dad, we've got one more. Vroom. Remember Vroom? The former online used car retailer is filing for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So another... It's, it's wild, man. Vroom goes to bankruptcy. Carvana goes to the moon. Make it make sense. I don't know, but uh, well, and 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 they're going through bankruptcy reorganization, and yet they lost another thirty three million dollars last quarter. Um, but you know, somebody's figuring something out to try and keep them around. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, perhaps we picked the wrong end of it. Maybe we should have. Maybe we should have gone into actual retail. I don't know. Jaguar stops selling new cars in the United Kingdom ahead of EV only ship. This is one way. Yes. To be like the dinosaurs and go extinct, isn't it? Uh, it, it, it appears as if. Uh, <laughs> it, it appears as if they bought into, oh my goodness, we have to go all electric uh, sooner rather than later, uh, more so than some others have. Um, and uh, could ultimately end to the demise of a uh, long held British brand. Uh, that, if I'm not mistaken, is owned by Tata, the uh, largest uh, Indian automotive company. Um, so maybe it's maybe its English roots aren't quite what they used to be. But still, it was, you know, a a a brand that was um, sought after, not because it they they were considered to be such fine automobiles, but they were luxury automobiles. and people, People were willing to pay for the luxury of driving a Jaguar. And 
you know, the, the story always went, if you wanted to be able to drive a Jaguar every day, you needed to have at least two because you knew one of the two was going to have electrical issues. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just check it out, buddy. You're young. You check I it out. Know. Um, and you'll find that it's true. And and so here's a company that's always been known for electrical issues and wiring issues, okay, that is is completely pulling out of uh, internal combustion engine uh, vehicles and going to an electric, battery electric vehicle uh, with a history of having electrical issues. What could possibly go wrong? I mean... Just think about that for a second. What, what, I, you know, you plug it into your, to your charger at home and, and I don't know, your home blows up. I don't know, but what could, what could possibly go? Well, something was wired wrong. What could, I, I wish them luck.